So the OnePlus 8 Pro has had a bit of a will it won't it journey in India at least as far as the sales are concerned. After the lockdown actually delayed the global launch, there was also a delay in the sales of the phones in India primarily because of the fact that the pandemic affected a few factory workers in Noida. But all that seems to be changing really soon and you know sales are going to be resuming on June 15th, two days after this review goes live. Anyway, all that doesn't matter too much but what matters is that the OnePlus 8 Pro global reviews are already out. Having said that, the Indian reviews of this phone will matter a lot primarily because, you know, the Indian price of the phone is actually much lower compared to the global prices and therefore we have to see the OnePlus 8 Pro from a new light. By the way, I feel that the OnePlus 8 Pro could be the culmination of OnePlus's aspiration to rise up the ladder and go up the value chain. I think this is going to be the most expensive OnePlus phone uh, until now and probably in the future as well. Now there is a strong reason why I believe that is because OnePlus has clearly stated that it is pivoting to uh, you know making more affordable uh, you know technology products across categories starting with a TV under rupees 20,000. Anyway I'm Ashar from Mr. Phone and this is my full review of the OnePlus 8 Pro and I'll tell you whether you should buy this phone or not. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever Mr. Phone puts out an awesome new tech video. Also, we're building communities over at Instagram and Telegram, links to which should be in the description below. Furthermore, I'd like to highlight that the sponsors for this video are the cool folks over at Glazed Inc. who make tempered glasses for phones like the OnePlus 8 Pro and a lot of phones out there. Now these tempered glasses are not your garden variety roadside tempered glasses that you get for cheap. These are actually very good quality tempered glasses and they're not really expensive either. These are 2.5D curved tempered glasses, you know, especially important for a phone like the OnePlus 8 Pro. So don't forget to go and check their website out in the link below. The OnePlus 8 Pro's design has had a bit of a nip and tuck to make it even more refined. You do get the same frosted Gorilla Glass 5 back design with a thin metal railing that separates it from the Gorilla Glass 5 front. And you also get a vertical camera module with three cameras on the rear and another camera is lined up next to it above the laser autofocus and flash modules. What's changed is the pop-up selfie camera module from the OnePlus 70 Pro which is now gone. Which has actually helped OnePlus shave off a few grams and make it thinner too. In fact, compared to all the Snapdragon 865 phones in India today, the OnePlus 8 Pro is the slimmest and lightest phone around. The chart on your screen right now should give you a fair idea of the differences. To be able to keep the thickness to 8.5mm and the weight under 199 gram is absolutely great. The only other phones that are lighter and slimmer are the Galaxy S20 and the S20 Plus, but in India you get only the Exynos variants of the phone. And considering its reduced width compared to the OnePlus 70 Pro, coupled with the matte glass finish and the extreme curves of the display, makes it easier to hold and use with one hand. Having said that, the camera module does jut out a fair bit from the rear, making the phone wobble on a flat surface. Moreover, it makes the phone top heavy. I feel the weight distribution was slightly better on the Mi 10. I absolutely love how the green variant looks and that's the one I've been using. Also, if you hadn't noticed, the OnePlus logo at the bottom also looks slightly different now. I think they've changed it. I kind of like it. But the most important changes to design are the functional ones. You now get a wireless charging coil inside the phone with support for 30 watt warp wireless charging speeds. Additionally, you can also reverse charge other wireless devices at 3 watt speeds by placing them on the phone. Apart from this, you finally get one feature we've all been waiting for. Yes, an IP68 rating which makes the phone fully resistant to dust and immersion under 1.5 5 meters of fresh water up to 30 minutes. Hell yeah! The rest of the standard additions include a Type-C port at the bottom along with a speaker grill which doubles up with the earpiece as a stereo setup and unfortunately no headphone jack on this one either. The volume buttons on the left side and the power button on the right side are super clicky and tactile. And of course the ever so awesome alert slider is also present. By the way, now by default, you need to actually press the power button and the volume up button to shut down the phone. Just pressing the power button brings up the Google Assistant. So yeah, the design of the OnePlus 8 Pro is possibly one of the most polished ones on an Android smartphone yet. And I'm really happy how the whole industrial design of OnePlus flagship smartphones have matured over the years. Now, if there's one thing that I'd like to change about the OnePlus 8 Pro in the next iteration of OnePlus's flagship, it would be the weight distribution alone. Oh, 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 oh,
Now the 6.78 inch curved fluid AMOLED QHD Plus panel along with 120Hz refresh rate and HDR10 Plus support is possibly the best damn display panel that you can find on an Android flagship today. If that line is enough to convince you, you can jump to the next section. Thanks to the fact that now you get those YouTube highlights which can be created into sections. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, the best part is that the OnePlus 8 Pro can touch 120Hz refresh rate at full QHD Plus resolution, which is not possible on Samsung's S series flagships either. This display can get extremely bright outdoors, reaching up to 1300 nits on automatic brightness. Plus, the color accuracy is impeccable if you switch from vivid to natural color profile from the settings. GSM Marina actually measured an average delta E of 2.5 in this setting, and that is great for a smartphone display. Now, add the excellent HDR10 Plus support, and you get a visual experience matched by nothing out there. Also, all that hue and cry about the black crush and green tint issue that was raised on Reddit, it might have happened initially, but I didn't face any problem during my usage. I got a clean image and a crystal clear picture most of the time on the OnePlus 8 Pro's display. I had a blast playing games and watching videos on this display. Now, the other new addition to the display is MEMC or motion interpolation by increasing frame rates of 24 FPS, 30 FPS and 60 FPS video clips to 120 FPS to match the screen refresh rate. You can toggle this feature from the settings and it works only with a few supported video streaming apps and only in landscape mode. To be honest, I found it to be a really pointless addition for a phone and the whole interpolation looks very janky to me. The soap opera effect is something I absolutely abhor and so do filmmakers. Instead, I wish OnePlus could have added Dolby Vision support along with HDR10+. I know it takes money to get certification, but it'd be so worth it. Talking about the touchscreen, the 120Hz refresh rate is coupled with a 240Hz touch sampling rate. I mean, the experience of using the phone is just next level. It just glides across the system with consummate ease. That said, the display on the OnePlus 8 Pro is really curved almost to the extent of a waterfall display. And to be frank, I was worried about ghost touches, but I didn't face any as such, even while gaming. However, what I did feel was that the palm rejection built into the software is really aggressive. The flat part of the display on the top is really responsive, but sometimes tapping menu elements in a game on the curved part of the display won't register a touch. That was really annoying. Finally, you get a punch hole camera on the top left corner, which is not very distracting while using the phone. Oh, and the in-display fingerprint scanner is actually built into this display, which has been the case uh, for a long time now on OnePlus flagships and it is super fast to unlock as usual. The OnePlus 8 Pro runs the latest version of Oxygen OS 10.5 on top of Android 10. There is no doubt in my mind that this is my favorite OEM skin by far. It has little to no bloatware, well-optimized performance, near-stock Android experience, a truckload of customization options and more. That said, there are a few new additions. Firstly, the work-life balance mode is here. Now you can mute notifications from a bunch of apps across categories which are automated by default. For example, you can schedule your work timings from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., set the location to office, and mute notifications from social networking apps. I feel this could come in really handy. The minus one page now has the Google Discover feed by default. However, if you wish, you can also go back to the OnePlus shelf. Android 10's coolest features, live captions, is finally here. The easiest way to invoke it on Oxygen OS is by pressing the volume button. It works really well. The inbuilt ambient mode is great. You can view notifications, battery life, and the clock, but I wish we had an always on display. Plus some more customization options. Currently, it looks sparse. There's also the horizon light feature that doesn't have too many options. I feel OnePlus should either give more flexibility when adding cosmetic features like these or eliminate them entirely. However, the customization options for accent colors, the dark mode, tones, icon shapes, etc. are still stunning. I absolutely love it and keep playing with it. The messages app has also been updated now. Messages are now bunched into card based stacks such as OTP, transactional and promotional. Pretty convenient, but nothing new. I have been using Microsoft's SMS manager for a long Long time now and that does exactly this. Apart from Google Assistant, you now get access to Amazon's Alexa, which also works with screen off as well. Useful addition if you ask me. I did face a few issues though. Chrome froze a few times and I had to restart it. Plus notifications from chat apps such as WhatsApp and Telegram came in late sometimes. I guess this has something to do with the aggressive battery management of Oxygen OS.
The OnePlus 8 Pro comes with four cameras on the rear. You get a 48 megapixel Sony IMX 689 primary camera, a hugely upgraded 48 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, the same 8 megapixel telephoto camera that was present on the OnePlus 70 Pro with 3x optical zoom and the controversial color filter lens. In fact, OnePlus has removed the controversial feature that could see through t-shirts. By the way, on the front, you get a 16 megapixel snapper. Now I do have a detailed camera comparison of the OnePlus 8 Pro against the S20 Ultra and the Mi 10, do check it out but let me put down my thoughts for you right now. The 48 megapixel Sony IMX689 is a very capable sensor. It offers extremely crisp textures at 100% crop. The color processing is fairly natural too but sometimes it tends to pick up the blues and the greens to make the color look more vibrant. Also I shoot it a couple of stops lower for a more even exposure because the images look slightly brighter than usual. The dynamic range performance with the new always on HDR mode and and the Spectra 480 ISP on the Snapdragon 865 has improved by a lot. Now, the IMX 689 is attached to an f by 1.8 aperture lens. This big sensor plus wide aperture lens, you know, setup means that you can't capture close-up shots of subjects less than three feet away without having parts of the subject out of focus. This is the same problem with the 108 megapixel camera on the Mi 10. Interestingly, when you do go close to a subject, the OnePlus 8 Pro actually switches to the macro mode by default, and which means that it is actually switching on to the ultra wide angle camera, which can do macro shots. And they look extremely crisp too, much better than the two megapixel macro solution on the Mi 10. In fact, the ultra wide angle shots by themselves look very crisp, but the barrel distortion correction could have been better especially around the corners. The selfie camera does a decent job in good lighting conditions with fairly accurate facial tone representation, but in low light it struggles. The resulting images were really soft. You have to resort to the screen flash and not that it's gonna help you out too much either. The telephoto camera with its 3x optical zoom takes fairly crisp shots, but it could have been upgraded if you ask me. The one area where OnePlus has made big strides is in video recording using the rear cameras. You can now shoot 4K 60fps video using the main camera and the ultra wide angle as well. You get plenty of details, excellent color, good sound recording and great dynamic range. The stabilization at 4K 60fps is good when you are not panning. Panning causes frame freezes that look odd. I think this has something to do with the gyro based EIS which is actually struggling here. One other addition is the new cinematic recording mode where you can shoot videos in 21 is to 9 aspect ratio. I think it looks really really good. My only grouse is the front camera video recording is a bit of a letdown. Now thanks to the IMX689 sensor and a fairly good nightscape mode, the OnePlus 8 Pro just shines in low light shots. I got such crisp details in low light shots, it was even better than the S20 Ultra and the Mi 10. Very good job OnePlus. Although I'm sure that there are phones like the Huawei P40 Pro, the Pixel and the iPhone that could possibly do better than the OnePlus 8 Pro when it comes to low light photography. All OnePlus needs to do is some fine tuning of the algorithm and possibly change the telephoto camera out for a higher resolution one. And of course improve the selfie cameras as well. Not necessarily the selfie camera performance in daylight, but the selfie camera's video performance. That's it, that's all it'll take for it to become the top three best camera smartphones next year if it makes those improvements. Now, most importantly, don't believe anyone who says that the OnePlus 8 Pro's cameras are bad because you have to take the price into context and in this price range, I think the OnePlus 8 Pro's cameras are fairly dependable and really, really competent as well. The OnePlus 8 Pro comes with Snapdragon 865 coupled with fast 8 slash 12 GB of LPDDR5 RAM and 128 slash 256 GB of fast UFS 3.0 storage. The benchmark numbers are great for the most part, but when it comes to Snapdragon 865 toting Android phones, the iQ3 still tops our testing numbers. You can take a look at the chart to judge for yourself. Anyway, I don't think anyone can have any complaints about the blazing fast and smooth performance of the OnePlus 8 Pro. Gaming was so so much fun on the phone. Every high graphics game runs at the best setting. I didn't face any heating issues either. This is a dependable performance from a robust phone. Now when it comes to stereo sound using the grill and the earpiece, these can get pretty loud and are one of the best setups out there. But I'm slightly disappointed that the OnePlus 8 Pro is not high res certified. The audio quality through my Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus was great, but the Mi 10 is actually a tad better. 
However, considering most of us will use a Type-C to 3.5 mm active dongle with an inbuilt DAC, the DAC inside the phone rarely matters these days. So I can't really complain too much. But if you're an audiophile like me, the Mi 10 is the best you can get now. As for the earpiece, it is good enough for calls but not the best. Xiaomi and Samsung's phones sound better and cleaner. The call quality was good too over Airtel's robust 4G network in Gurgaon. However, I'd have loved to test 5G on the phone. Alas, that'll have to wait for a long time. The OnePlus 8 Pro has a 4510mAh battery. I have very detailed battery stats based on the resolution and the refresh rate. As you can see on your screen right now, the phone managed 5 hours 34 minutes of screen on time on QHD plus slash 120Hz refresh rate. And the best screen on time I could get was 6 hours and 40 minutes on FHD plus and 60Hz refresh rate. The 7 nanometer fabrication of the Snapdragon 865 ensures that you get an improved battery performance even on high refresh rate settings. Honestly, I feel really bad that Samsung's Galaxy S20 series doesn't get SD865 in India. You can easily squeeze a day or two worth of battery life from the OnePlus 8 Pro depending on the settings and your usage. The phone also charges from 0 to 100 using the warp charger in about 1 hour and 15 minutes. But I was more excited to test out the wireless charging feature. But alas, we didn't get the compatible wireless charging accessory with the review unit. However, I tried Qi wireless charging and it worked fine. So did the reverse wireless charging. I'm fully satisfied with the battery performance and the charging capabilities of the OnePlus 8 Pro. But note that all the battery life tests were done on 4G networks, 5G could suck more battery when you start using it in the future. So all in all, if you want to buy the best Android phone out there, just go for the OnePlus 8 Pro. I don't need to say anything more. I mean, it has everything going for it. It's got great display. It's got a great design. It's got great battery life. The performance is obviously excellent. Of course, the cameras are not the best out there, but it is a very competent camera. And I think most people who will be using this camera setup are not going to be disappointed either. Plus, OnePlus has finally added wireless charging and IP rating, two features that quite a lot of people were actually craving for. All right, so with the OnePlus 8 Pro and what we think about it, we're starting off with a new Mr. Phone's stamp of excellence for products that we think actually ace our reviews. So the first stamp of excellence from Mr. Phone goes to the OnePlus 8 Pro. Having said that, there are alternatives to the OnePlus 8 Pro and I've picked out three best alternatives in and around this price range. Let's start talking about them, but if you think that I've missed out on any phone, don't hesitate to ask me a question in the comment section below. And I'll try to get them answered whenever I have the time. The first phone that I could think of was the iPhone 11. For anyone who wants an iPhone will possibly look past the OnePlus 8 Pro because when someone wants an iPhone, they want an iPhone. But trust me, the 8 Pro is better than the iPhone 11 in more ways than one. You get a better design, better display and a better battery life. The performance of the two phones should be neck to neck as well. The iPhone 11 will definitely offer a superior camera experience, but like we saw, the OnePlus 8 Pro is no slouch either. Either. So yeah, think deeply before plonking that extra moolah on the iPhone 11. Now when it comes to the Mi 10, it is possibly the closest competitor to the OnePlus 8 Pro and I like the ergonomics of Xiaomi's flagship and the fact that you get high res audio capability. Although in almost every other department, the OnePlus 8 Pro is a better phone. Now I really like the Galaxy S20 Plus. It is slimmer than the OnePlus 8 Pro and One UI 2.0 is almost as good as Oxygen OS. The cameras could be better too for most situations but not by a huge margin. Although the OnePlus 8 Pro is more affordable, has a better display and significantly better battery life compared to the Exynos variants of the Galaxy S20 Plus and of course the OnePlus 8 Pro has better performance too. Now that makes it the overall better purchase. So what do you guys think of the OnePlus 8 Pro? Do let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Eshar from Mr. Phone signing off. Goodbye and Godspeed my friends.